individually, I think it's probably impossible for both Goku and Vegeta to ever become the perfect Saiyan warrior. I mean, even Broly has bad days every once in a while, but you put them both together and bingo, man, you got the strongest Saiyan ever, right? I mean, have you guys ever seen Gogeta or Vegito lose a fight? And before you say Vegito, just because he didn't win versus Zamasu doesn't mean he lost either. But what if we were to go even further beyond that? The greatest Saiyan amalgamation possible. I mean, Gogeta and Vegito fuse together and essentially become the single greatest warrior in the entire story. More on that later. We're going to talk exactly about how this new guy solos all the destroyers and angels including the grand priest the later part might be a lot of delusion though but i'm pretty sure he could easily one shot all the destroyers and angels though for now what would his name be i guess the easiest would probably be gogito maybe a silent warrior who doesn't even bother stating his name it all begins one day when two entirely different timelines overlap and before we continue on with the what if, if you guys haven't already and you are enjoying the content, be sure to leave a like down below. Let's try to aim for 2000. Also subscribe if you haven't already and follow on both Twitch and Twitter to always stay up with me and whenever I go live. But without further ado. Every time Trunks has used the time machine, it left behind some cosmic residue. The entire continuum of space and time was hinged enough that this is a problem. Even so, the overseer of time lets it slide because Trunks is the best part-time worker anyone could ask for. Unfortunately, some problems aren't meant to be overlooked. When the future Zeno erases everything in the future Trunks timeline, the Grand Priest is left with no choice but to relocate back to the Angel Realm and the angels follow suit soon after. However, he then uses his powers to go back in time and witnesses the entire Zamasu ordeal. But that isn't even the worst part. He notices a certain discrepancy in the universe, a subtle disconnect. The events of the Janemba arc definitely happened, but at the same time, and well, literally at the same time, Universe 7 was busy trying to deal with a universal threat in the form of Boo. How can two mutually exclusive events take place at the same time? Just why can't Universe 7 be normal for once, the Grand Priest thinks to himself. But it doesn't end here. Quietly, without even the ones involved really noticing, these two mutually exclusive timelines overlap at a certain point in the future. The Broly arc. For some reason, this contingence is in line with the flow of this universe. This doesn't sit right with the Grand Priest and since the worst had already happened in a different future where all of reality was erased, the Grand Priest decides to be bold and proactive for once. He grabs the two alternate timelines with one hand each and immediately, just like tying a knot, he blends them. The point where Goku and Vegeta fused against Janemba and also the point where Goku and Vegeta fused against Super Buu. Now, both of these are a thing during the same period of time, but jumping back forward in time to when these two fusions take place again. That's right, when Gogeta and Vegito are at their strongest. The Grand Priest makes sure to bend the reality in a way that these two are in each other's sight, even though Vegito doesn't actually happen until a future timeline that has all been erased. The Grand Priest still wants some insurance. Yeah, he wants to take these two out at their finest to avoid messing up the past too much, but he's also a little curious about why this universe is acting so differently. Whatever happened to the chronological order of events? Just like that, as the Grand Priest faces forward, right in front of him is the recently transformed Gogeta as well as the recently transformed Vegito. Both are still in their base forms and they're very confused right now. So the two fusions blabber back and forth in confusion while the Grand Priest proceeds to summon all destroyers and all Supreme Kai. The angels too, of course. Listen, everybody. You two as well, Gogeta and Vegito. I've gathered you all here because of a glitch in this universe. Goku and Vegeta, you know, the Saiyans who did great in the Tournament of Power. Well, as it just so happens, at one instance in the past, they fused together. But the circumstances of their fusion were different, and the result of their fusion were different too. Why did something so random happen in the first place? I'd like a reasonable explanation or you can kill these two. Whatever works best, the Grand Priest declares. 
Meanwhile, Beerus clenches his fist. In my tens of millions of years of living experience, never have I been so troubled by someone as much as these two. What do you say we do, Whis? Beerus asks. Lord Beerus, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but time right now has ceased to exist. I'd say even after Gogeta and Vegeta are killed, reality itself will simply go back to normal and everyone, even us, will forget this even happened, Whis replies. And how would you know, Beerus asks. Just a hunch, I guess, Whis replies. Subsequently, the other destroyers had already jumped on the two Saiyans, but even in base form, both Gogeta and Vegeta are strong, and I mean very strong. They easily manage to evade all the attacks, but can't really seem to land one of their own either. Well, how about Super Saiyan? Both transform into Super Saiyans, and from what we've seen, Super Saiyan Gogeta is already more powerful than either Goku or Vegeta in their Super Saiyan Blue forms. Even more powerful than both of them. Things escalate very quickly from here on out. Vegito kicks Champa in the gut so bad that he flies all the way and just clashes into Beerus. Another destroyer decides to take advantage of the momentary opening to attack Vegito from behind, but Gogeta has his back, and they both evolve into Vegito Blue and Gogeta Blue respectively. The two then look at each other in the eye and they instinctively know what this is about. Who can take out more opponents, of course? What happens next is akin to a gruesome street fight. The destroyers, when they're fighting for real, are crazy strong. Maybe if somehow Gogeta or Vegito could pull off an overpowered technique, they could stand a chance against the alleged strongest people in the multiverse, but both Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego are kind of individual things. The Grand Priest was watching from a distance, carefully looking to see if he could catch any new irregularities. He can feel it in his toes that something unreal is about to happen next. Hey man, we aren't getting anywhere, plus usually I would have already split back by now. I don't know what's wrong with this place, Vegito asks. I can feel you buddy, but what's the story behind those cute little earrings you've been wearing, Gogeta asks. Oh, these? These are just for fusion, Vegito replies. Wait, so you mean you don't do the fusion dance, Gogeta asks? What dance? Now I'm curious, Vegito asks back. Hearing this, Gogeta has the craziest idea. Not only does he want those Pitara earrings, but he also wants to show this new friend the fusion dance. Luckily, Champa was still floating around, and so Gogeta just pops up behind the guy and snatches his earring off. He teleports right back and tells Vegito to just follow his lead. Just imitate my movements, alright? I know you definitely have the skill to just do that. So take it seriously, Gogeta states. Vegito is all game, and the next thing you know, Gogeta and Vegito have performed the fusion dance. What's majestic about the fusion dance is how it only brings out the best from both counterparts, and so, even with Gogeta and Vegito, the two who are already a result of multiplication, a new mathematical equation is formed. An exponential overflow, perfectly arcing into a tangent 90 degree angle and almost infinite increase of power going straight up. Suddenly the emergence of this new individual puts a dent in this realm and time begins to flow again. So after all this time, someone finally showed up. A warrior who could rival even me, the Grand Priest declares, as the destroyer from Universe 11 is sent flying back into his face. You can call this new individual Gogito, or you can call him Warrior X. But for what it's worth, his existence is definitely not welcomed in the multiverse. A one-on-one -on -one begins between the Grand Priest and Gogito, but without anyone really noticing, the Grand Priest has already been hit. From the moment Gogito emerged, the flow of time was recovered, and so it's no longer the Grand Priest domain. What next? Super Saiyan Gogito? Of course, the Grand Priest feels compelled to unleash his power as well, and in response, Gogito goes all out with his own power. He becomes Gogito Blue. But the evolution continues. He starts going further beyond Blue into a state which can only be referred to as Super Saiyan White. But blink and it all disappears. They split and then they split again. As it is always the case with Fusion, they use up all of their time and energy before the battle could proceed any longer and suddenly revert back to normal. All the way back to normal. Two Gokus and two Vegetas, and they're all gassed. 
The Grand Prix couldn't keep himself from laughing. It had been a long time since he had felt his blood pump so much. Conveniently, Whis was right. After this ordeal, things will just go back to normal and everyone will forget. It'll be just like a long dream, you know, a dream of the greatest fight any warrior in the multiverse could ever fathom, but who knows? Maybe it was just a dream the whole time.